and we're going to read the faults. So here we are. It's telling me that there was three faults and it was on the passenger side signal acquisition and actuation module. Hey, and if you're one of those special people that got all the way to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. I'm only a small YouTuber. It shows me that these sorts of videos have been helpful. I'll try and save you time and stress and give you that bit of encouragement. If you get stuck on anything, drop it in below. I'll see if I can help you. Got one of these and you're trying to work out how to print it on a piece of paper. To be fair, actually, I, I usually just get my phone and I just take a photo of the screen. It's a bit naff, you know, sometimes you don't always get it exactly right and you've got to go back and do it again because you've got a bit of glare on the screen. So I get it, having a piece of paper and actually having it in your hand, what are you going to do? Maybe you're going to fax it? Do they exist anymore, faxes? But nevertheless, I understand why you would perhaps want to print it out. So don't worry, we've got this. I'm going to show you how to do it. But also, if you haven't actually worked out how to download the software, there's a little bit of a trick to it. It's not as obvious as you think. I'm gonna cover that too. Enough talk, let's get into it. Okay, there's a few points that you need to know. First of all, what device you're using. I'm using a Mac today. Um, I also use a PC. I'm kind of learning with the Mac. There's a few things that just blow my mind, but nevertheless, I'm all for trying new things. So when you download it from a Mac, it's different. Uh, so I'm going to cover what it would be like for doing a PC because basically you're using a web browser. So you type in iCarsoft. I've done another video, see down below, where um, I go into a little bit more detail. But I'm just going to quickly go on an overview. Now, it's important to make sure you choose the right page. So I go to .com. And along the top here, you need to select support and updates. Now. If you have a look, you can see an outline of the different shapes of items that you've got. And if you watch down in the content of the page, when I click on one of the items, it changes. See that? And that threw me at first because it was actually uh, not until I realized you have to select the right icon for your device before you go to the next stage. So I got a version two. It's that one there, version one, version two, version three. You can see that the content changes. These blue links here, these are actually all the different updates that you can get for your vehicle. Down the bottom, there's a YouTube video. To be honest with you, it's a bit convoluted, hence why I'm doing this video. And you can download detailed instructions as well. Again, not quite as clear, uh, I don't think, as it could be. But if you've got a PC, you then select Updating Tool Downloading. It doesn't ever sound right to me when I say that, but nevertheless, that's what you want. Updating Tool Downloading. Hit that. It will download it into your downloads folder. And at this point, the Mac doesn't like it. And for your PC, you'll then follow the instructions, you unzip it, and you'll follow the install. But you can see that if I try and open this now, it just won't have it. Okay, so let's get rid of that. That doesn't work. So if you've got a Mac, this is what you do. You go, amazingly, to the App Store. They've got an app. And just type in iCarSoft. There she is. I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to press open. And this is where you then follow the instructions to the point that I got before, where you would be on your PC. So choose the memory device. Now you can enter the serial number here, or you can choose the memory device. So what I found helps if you actually plug in the unit. It uses one of the old fashioned, um, I think they call them mini SDs. The other end is just a USB connection. As you can see, it beeps and the unit turns on. Now, on my screen here, it's got my serial number, it's got the version, and it's got the UID, which is unique to my device. So I'm going to choose memory device now that I've plugged it in. Please select the inserted external storage device or TF card and authorize the application to use the device. Press OK. And it's here, no name, it comes up on the Mac, so let's hit that authorize there we go you can see that it's popped in my serial number and the report print is where you're then going to be able to get all your details um, that you've saved on the faults when you've run some diagnostics on the car so let's go into that there you can see here it's given me a menu i've got ben's en which is the diagnostics i did the other day so let's drop down there and you can see the different tests so let's go to the first one and it was an SL230, yes. That gives me the year of the vehicle, yes. And it gives me the model of the engine. 
and it was a smart scan. And remember the smart scan and manual scan, they're different. Um, smart scan is where it chooses automatically what your device can talk to with the car. Manual, you just want to go into something specific like ABS straight away, saves a bit of time. So you go to smart scan, system diagnostics, and read faults. And here we go. So this screen that you're seeing right here, this is the good stuff. All right, so let's go into this one, SL230, 09, 2003 to 2008, the model of the engine, and it was a manual test this time, uh, rather than the smart scan. And we went into the SAM, and we're gonna read the faults. So here we are. It's telling me that there was three faults, and it was on the passenger side, signal acquisition and actuation module, which gave me a B1629 fault code. It was historic, meaning it was already there, and it's been there for a little while. And the component, E2, E3, right standing and parking lamp in module. E2, right front headlight unit is faulty. So there you go. So it gives you a little bit more depth, a little bit more information. And here's the important thing. You want to take this now, and you want to go and print it, and have a sexy piece of paper that you can pop down the garage with. Okay, so we've got options now on how to get this information, which is showed on your screen onto a piece of paper, or to a text document, or to PDF, etc. So at the bottom here, you can go print. Now I've got a printer, unfortunately, selected. So you would select the printer there, and then you would simply press print. I'm not gonna bore you through it. That's how you would do it, easy peasy. Um, but you can save it and print it later on. So I'm gonna save it as Mercedes printout. Uh, let's press save. It'll save it as a text file. So let's go to Mercedes printout, wherever that is. There it is. Double click that, and here we are. This is your uh, this is your printout. So you've got all the information, nice and clear. You can take it down the shop and tell them all the uh, faults that you've got. Hopefully, they can fix it. No, in fact, hopefully, you can actually work it out yourself by having a look at some of my other videos and maybe using your iCarsoft, you can actually work it out. They're not always as hard as you think. So let's say you haven't got the cable for your iCarsoft well, you haven't got the iCarsoft, you've, you've got the memory card only, that little tiny uh, micro SD card. You can still put that in and I'll show you what it looks like. It kind of gives you the information and you may need to fiddle about to try and get um, a reader. It's a, a Rex file that it goes into. If you put it in a little reader, plug your little USB into your Mac or your PC, this is what you see. So the MS Diag is part of the iCarsoft, this folder here and the logs makes record system this is where the information is actually stored on the card it makes it into these particular folders for example if i select makes these are all the cars that i've got these are the different 10 versions um don't think you can just unfortunately delete them it would be lovely to think that you could but unfortunately you have to um, go with once you've downloaded if you've got the option where you can download multiple cars then it's stored on there. If you delete it, if you plug it back in, they'll just populate automatically. So anyway, these are the cars that I chose. On the particular version of the software, you can see here there's one, two, three, four different versions. Now I could delete the older versions and it's just numerical. So 30, 0.30, 0 0.60, 0 0.70, they're the older versions. I could delete those if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna leave them in there. It's not doing any harm. So going back to the actual log now, it's actually under the record. And this is where we have the, the fault logs that we just uh, did in the vehicle. So it was a Mercedes Benz, so I'm gonna go in here. And these are the four different logs that we then took from the vehicle. So let's take the first one there. And if you just keep tabbing down, you can see the file structure. So we've got SL230, that's my vehicle. And there's the years, keep going down. There is the specific engine number, which is the 0.456. Smart scan is the type of scan we, we did. It could have been the manual scan or the smart scan. Obviously we did the smart scan this occasion. Then we went into system diagnostics, which is the menu after the smart scan. And here is read the fault code. And this last file here, this one, this .rex file, is the specific recorded fault on this particular occasion. Now, if I was to try and open this, it won't allow it because I need to have a specific reader for it. And that's why you plug in 
your iCarsoft and it will do that for you. You might be able to find online, you can potentially read it. If I just open it, say, for example, with um, notes or text app, let's see what happens here. You can see it's all in sort of coded format, but in there, that's actually going to tell you your fault code, uh, probably time and date, and the area of the vehicle that it checked. So if you want to make it easy on yourself, just plug in the iCarsoft. It's a lot easier and it does all that sort of formatting for you. Right, so it's put in my serial number. Now there's a button here, it says upgrade. Let's hit that and see. Yeah, it's got my UID code in there. I'll log in. So the UID code is how you log in. So I've got that on my screen here. I'll type that in. Here we go. So at the top here, we've got my information of the folders. I've got 267 megabytes, and I've only got, uh, oh, I've got 2,000, nearly 3,000 megabytes free, so that's okay. Now it says selected left. I've already selected 10 cars. You can't change it. Once you've selected those cars, that's it. But you can get the latest version of the particular car brand. So here, for example, let's start at the top. The local version, meaning the version on my iCarsoft, is showing as 11.85. There's a 12.6 version. That's because new codes would have been written, uh, new information has been found. So you can just update it. So you select the one that you want and you just press download. And all the ones that are ticked here will download those. So if you don't want to download them all, obviously you start unticking them and only select the ones that you want because it will take some time otherwise. So if I just wanted to download Mercedes-Benz, I'd uncheck the rest of them and I'll get the latest version. You can keep the old versions on your iCarsoft. You'll find when you load it up that it will load up all the versions of software. I've got about three or four. So you can choose to keep them or delete them, it's up to you. Well, there you go, pretty straightforward. You've got options there of printing it physically on a piece of paper. If you've got a printer connected, I didn't unfortunately. I just saved it as a text file. I can email it to the garage to do whatever I want with it. But importantly, all that info is there. And you can then save it on your phone and you can take it to the garage and bring up that PDF or text on your phone as well. I've got loads of stuff on iCarsoft. I've just used it over the years. I'm not affiliated in any way. I don't make any money from iCarsoft. I just find it actually a really useful bit of kit. For the money that it is, I must have been able to save. I probably bought this um, about four or five years ago and it's paid for itself 10 times over. The amount of people's cars are fixed, my cars included. It always has got me out of trouble. So have a look at this lovely little playlist. It's got everything about iCarsoft that I've learned specialised in over the years. Hey, and if you're one of those special people that got all the way to the end of the video, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm only a small YouTuber, so if you chose to subscribe with me, oh man, so much thanks goes out to you beautiful people. That just took that effort to subscribe. Just bewilders me. It's, it's lovely to see that I'm actually getting to help people and I'm getting lots of questions now and that's what it's all about. That's the whole point I did this channel was to try and help people because it just frustrated me when I couldn't find the information or people get too frightened to try something. And uh, yeah, being an engineer, I thought, well, I've got a few things that I can maybe give back and it looks like things are going OK. So thank you again if you subscribe. Really appreciate it. And you chose to give me that little thumb and all the rest it does wonders for my analytics. It shows me that these sorts of videos are actually getting really liked and used and they're being helpful. If you get stuck on anything, drop it in below. I'll see if I can help you. See you on the next one. Bye for now.